Hello, hello. I'm Peggy Farron, and we are live with the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Welcome to episode number 99. I am here in Panama City, Florida, with Bonnie Tate Woodby. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Peggy. Bonnie is the owner of The Light Room, which is an art gallery specializing in photography. So we're going to talk about opening your own art gallery in this episode number 99 of the Understand Photography Show. But first I want to just tell you real briefly, um, you can, we're going, we're live on Facebook right now. We're using the fabulous iPhone since we're <laughs> not in my studio with all the cool stuff. Um, but you can also watch this video on YouTube uh, on Saturdays and um, also listen to it on iTunes or Stitcher or whatever you listen to your podcast. You can listen to this as a podcast. It's just do a search under the Understand Photography Show. So we're in episode 99 next week, August 10th, Friday, August 10th at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. We are celebrating our 100th episode of the Understand Photography Show with the fabulous Artie Morris. And Artie Morris is one of the most famous bird photographers in the world. He is, uh, he's an amazing, amazing guy. So we're going to mix things up. We have a new set that we're going to unveil. We're going to have lots of prizes just for watching. All you have to do is watch and comment to be put in for a prize. And um, it's going to be a live Q&A, so it's a little bit different. So please, please come next week. But this week, we've got Bonnie, and we're actually in her art gallery. We're in the, in the Lightroom right now. And Bonnie, let's hear a little bit about your background. So you were a curator and a photography instructor. Yes. Uh, this gallery, uh, the Lightroom, kind of brings together several different um, parts of uh, photography that I really enjoy. Uh, and that would be uh, exhibiting fine art photography and teaching photography and um, doing photography, taking pictures. So we have a studio as well. And, no, and what's your background? How did you get into this? Because you well, look so I back on young. That, well, you're thank young. you. You're no, not as young you as you look. I am. Exactly. <laughs> I was shocked when you told me how old you were. She's old, man. <laughs> thank you. Um, I studied photography in college mm -hmm. um, in, in an art photography program um, and kind of specialized in documentary photography. So that was my entry into it. Um, and then after college, um, I did a lot of different things, you know, as most photographers do, trying to find a niche. And um, I worked for other photographers doing wedding photography, um, some portrait work. And um, I ended up doing portrait photography on my own. Mm -hmm. So I got a little bit of business, the business of photography there. Um, years later, I ended up doing some teaching. Um, and eventually teaching photography, I went back to school and got a degree for elementary art education, which was something I actually used oh. briefly and then moved straight past it. Oh. So um, ended up doing, it ended up teaching photography anyway, okay. uh, to make a long story short. Um, and then uh, I worked in a gallery. Okay. And then I worked in, uh, in our local art uh, center. Um, oh planning and curating exhibits so and then I also kept teaching photography along the way and kept doing photography okay. yeah, mostly portrait photography and event photography um, so kind of doing multiple things at once and had the opportunity about a year and a half ago finally to bring it together into one space which is the light room. Okay, so that was, was a this... long answer, sorry. No, no, I wanted to hear your background. I mean, was this, like, was opening a gallery, like, a lifelong dream, or was it just something that you're like, hmm, I think this is a good good time and good place? And No, it was a, a lifelong dream. Um, I lived out in the Pacific Northwest near Tacoma okay. for a little bit, um, about seven years ago. And while I was there, there was a wonderful um, photography center, the Photography Center Northwest. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but I've it's just an awesome, uh, long, it's been around for a long time. Um, they have wonderful exhibits, 
Um, they have a certification program that photographers can go through to, um, you know, work their way towards professional work. Okay. Um, and they've got, well, they've just got all kinds of resources for photography, so they're, they're huge. And I was so inspired by that place when I lived there that it just kind of planted a seed. Okay. And so that's like the big seed and, and then we're the little tiny start. Start, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's the beginning. Yes. So it's, it's just the little bud. Yeah. It's going to be a big flower. <laughs> so that was kind of an inspiration. And, you know, we're a, a long way from being um, at that level, but... I wanted to create a space that mixed together a lot of different areas of photography where somebody could come and see photography on the walls and take a class, learn something, and then also, you know, have um, their headshot done or, um, you know, get their portrait done or even rent the studio. That's perfect, to, too. To learn how to do it themselves. So it's kind of an all-in-one space. Yeah, and it's really, really nice. Now, you are right in downtown Panama City, yes. Florida. Florida, you got to say Florida. Florida. Um, did you do like some type of market analysis? Why did you decide on downtown? You know, because the beach area is, I would imagine, where most of the people are. This time of year. This yes. is your busy season, right? We're right. in, we're in uh, August. Yeah, spring. And it's your busy spring season. Spring and summer um, are, are the busy season here. So it's a really long busy season. And uh, a, a lot more of the tourism is out on the beach, and, and we're in Panama City proper, so there's um, still a big tourist impact here. Uh -huh. But um, that bridge that separates us actually kind of makes a difference. So it's it's a different um, culture, different atmosphere, atmosphere here. Yeah. So yeah, we're in the old um, downtown part of the city, which is really cute. Which is really cute, and it's. Um, revitalizing right now we hope that's the idea uh, so there's a lot of new businesses and a lot of creative businesses oh. um, we're really close to the art center that I used to work for okay. kind of right across the street so there are a lot of other art um, spots close by and it's getting to where they're te you know we're teaming up and doing fun things so it's a really nice atmosphere down here yeah so that's why I chose downtown and shout out to Erin Mason because yes. I'm going to go see her exhibit at that art center today yes. or tomorrow. And hopefully I don't know. she will have an exhibit here in 2019. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. So this is an up and coming art area. So yes. that's what made you decide on this space. And you just kind of started looking and found a for rent sign or how yeah, did you find well, the actual I, space? That was the you know one of the first first jobs was where do we want to open? My husband and I, you know, when we we got this idea together, um, we decided on this downtown area where we finally found a great spot in, uh, and there was another neighborhood that we were looking at too that was kind of similar, St. Andrews. Um, but this was our first choice because we know that there's so much focus on trying to bring this little downtown back to life. Um, they're doing like, a good like, job. You know, they're, it's happening all across the country. Yeah, downtowns are in now. Yeah, I went to we my hope. I went to my hometown, which is Detroit, which mm -hmm. was a pit when I left, and yeah. it was really nice down there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, all right. So you decided on the spot. You found the spot just from looking. Just from looking. And Did we, you have? Oh, go ahead. oh, we just you know it was kind of just a lucky a lucky timing situation with this building. This, this and, is fabulous, and, and you're right in the middle of like restaurants and. Yeah. The art center, and there's a movie theater across the street. I'm yeah. looking out the window. <laughs> exactly. That's a, it was a great fit, and it's a, a good size, and um, we've got another half of the building. It's like a long, deep building, so we've got another half that we're not using yet that we'd like to turn into a big studio space and hopefully a dark room. A dark room? A dark Whoa. room. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, film is very artsy. I know my, my uh, niece went to some real fancy high school, mm -hmm. and they only taught film photography. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's now, coming you, back, for sure. Now, at the gallery, do you do you showcase any other type of art? Other no, than we're, we're strictly photography. photography. So I, I think that's part of what makes us unique, is that uh, you know everything we do is all revolving around photography. 
Now, how do you find the new artists to showcase? Because this lady here, she's got, mm -hmm. what's her name? Teresa Longo. And she is a local she's artist. She's a local. Mm -hmm. And she has an exhibit on doors and windows. Is yeah. that what it is? It's, it's called really cute. Gazing Through Windows, Staring at Closed Doors. So it's a uh, collection of photographs of doors and windows from around the world. So travel photographs, but okay. they're all doors and windows. And how did you find her? Um, well, she came in and found me as shortly after we opened up about a year and a half ago, and um, she's had, had just a really fun photography background, and so we kind of hit it off right away and discussed having a show in the future, and, and here it is. And you had my friend David Sussman is how yes. I met you. He, mm -hmm. he had an exhibit here, right? right? And how did you how did you find him? Well, I knew David uh, and Marianne for years. Um, oh, because they used to live here and they moved away. That's mm -hmm. how I met them because yeah. they moved towards me. Yeah, and, but they moved back, I think, right? They, I think they are in both places now. They kind of oh, go back okay. and forth, but are trying to be just snowbirds from City. Florida to Florida. From Florida, to Florida. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they're on the move a lot, but um, mostly I've gotten in touch with photographers um, you know that I either already knew of and liked their work and approached them about doing a show or um, I've you know just kind of met like friend of friend okay. type people um, or not necessarily friend of friend but kind of like uh, you know you should Wait, check out this right. photographer they might want to do a show and mostly it's been local and regional photographers so far um, although our next show next month is uh, our first non-local photographer. Ah, and who is that? Uh, and she's a friend, an old friend of mine, um, who I went to school with, who did a great series of photos on Cuba. Oh, Cuba. Yeah. By the way, when somebody gives me an opening like that, I just have to take it, because we still have openings for our <laughs> Cuba trip. <laughs> Maybe I should go. <laughs> It's February 2nd through the 9th. Sorry, guys, it's ladies only, but uh, we have an amazing trip planned. So go on understandphotography.com and you'll see the trip there for more information. And if you email me at peggy at understandphotography.com, I'll send you the detailed itinerary. All right, sorry. You it's just okay. give me Sounds an opening. Fun. I have to take it. <laughs> Sounds great. And you're welcome to come. Yeah. <laughs> have you been to Cuba? No. It's I'm really not. cool. Really freaking cool. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so when you choose the artist, mm -hmm. do they choose the theme, or do you come up with the theme together? That's, How does that work? That's what's part. That's part of what's really fun about doing this is that um, some people have a really specific idea, like this photographer Teresa. Uh, and so it was a really easy show to put together. We just kind of curated the, you know, the images, chose the photographs between the two of us. Um, but sometimes people are really open and they're not quite sure, so we can collaborate and come up with a theme. So what do they do? Idea. Show you like all their pictures on the computer, and you yeah, kind of help either, them organize them. I mean, it's always better to see the prints, you know, right there in person. Um, and sometimes people pair up and do group group shows. Because it's you know it's really a, it's a lot of work for a photographer to fill a whole room. It's a lot of money and a lot of money, a lot of investment. So I get that. And um, most of our shows have been group shows, so either two or three or four people working together, so that it's a lot easier for the photographer to, to do. And then hopefully they sell some or mo you know most to make of the work back. to make it back. Yeah. And. How, if I were a, a local photographer, or even a non-local photographer, mm -hmm. and I wanted to have a show here, what would be like? What would be the best approach to you as a gallery owner? Because that is one of the questions I get on a regular basis. Oh, I want to sell my art, but you know, I'm How too I... scared to go up to a gallery. What should I say? What do I do? Yeah, um, you know, either a phone call introducing themselves, and then with a follow-up email, or just an email, so, you know, an email um, that says this is what I'd like to show you with a link to a portfolio or a website. That's really all it takes. Would you say it's better to do that or to stop by? Um, if they're local people, obviously. Yeah, if they're local, <laughs> come by. And, you know, like I said earlier, it's always great to see prints because that's what's going to be on the wall. You know, the, as we know, it's always different from the screen to the print. 
from the computer screen to the print. So would they have a better chance of getting in if they came in with the print? I think so. Just stop by? Sure. Or should Just they make stop an appointment? By. I mean, an appointment is always preferred. And it, is it easy? Do you think that's true of most galleries, that the gallery owners are open to? I think it's really an individual, you know, a case by case. Um, since we're new and we're, you know, really open to, to suggestions and um, people's ideas, um, I think we're probably a little bit more friendly, maybe, yeah. towards that. Well, this um, town is awfully friendly, well, too. Well, it's wonderful to hear. <laughs> I mean, we, we took a walk this morning, and everybody, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> it was nice. Yeah, it is nice. So probably, um, you know, a phone call, and then can I come in and show you some work? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And, and you know what? Most gallery owners, because I know a lot of gallery owners, they're nice people. Yeah. They're they're not scary. Oh, no. I think it's intimidating, yeah. you know, to, to, to have the idea that you want to show your work in a gallery, but it's definitely it's a, a step to, well, plus, to ask and, and make that uh, leap. It, it, and it's not just that asking. It's, it's that your work is so personal to you. Mm -hmm. And if they don't like it, yeah. it's really tough rejection. Definitely. Definitely. I have felt that rejection. Yeah, well, we all, all have. Now, now, you have a mix of kind of photographers just getting started selling their art mm -hmm. and seasoned people like David Sussman, right? right? Mm -hmm. So I assume David knows his own pricing. He probably didn't even talk to you about that, but I would imagine that a lot of photographers need help with their pricing. Definitely, that's one of the hardest steps when we're getting a show ready. Everybody kind of dreads sitting down and figuring out, okay, what do I want to charge for this? Yeah. And so, yeah, photographers that have been doing doing it for a while know what, what they usually sell their work for and what their cost is, you know, what, what they put into it. Um, but with a photographer who's showing work for the first time, it's definitely a big learning experience. Uh, but it's good because it, it makes you figure out what exactly you're putting into your printing and your framing and your, um, you know, whatever other costs are associated with yeah. I I found that most, most photographers way underprice their stuff. Yes. And, I, I mean, they barely break even, and yeah. it's not worth it. And now, you take a cut. Is it too nosy to yeah. ask? Because most, most art galleries take 50% commission. Yeah, we only take 30. Oh, wow. So um, the gallery part of our business is just, a, you know, a part of it. So we make most of our income from photography classes. Okay. The gallery portion is, um, you know, my favorite part, probably. So it's uh, something I really wanted to put out there and give you know, give, that, uh, give that opportunity to photographers. Okay, so now, okay, let's say I'm accepted into your gallery and my grant, do you have a, like an opening night? How does that work? Yeah, uh, most of our shows run from a month to two months, you know, it, d depending on the photographer uh, and our schedule, and then we'll start off with an opening night party with... Um, hopefully lots of people and lots of sales and food and drinks and just a fun night to start right. off. So how do you, do you advertise that or is that up to the artist well, to both. advertise? Or? Yeah, it's definitely a collaboration uh, and I think that's really an important part for the photographer to understand that it's always going to be more successful when they spread the word. Yeah as much as they can because really your your first customers and sometimes your most repeat customers are your you know the people you already know yeah and yeah at least that's where you start out right and then um friends of theirs and so you know don't as underestimate the people that your family and your friends and those that you that already know what you're doing but would be excited to see you step to the next level and sell your work yeah, and even if you know they're not going to buy, it's still better to have a packed room. For sure, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's always better to have feeling. a bunch of people than having like, oh, I thought this was an opening and nobody's Def here. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, since this is, I've done one other show all by myself with no support in the background, 
And I can see that people are saying things, but because I can't see that far, I have no idea what those <laughs> words on the screen are. So I'm not trying to be rude to you, whoever's commenting. <laughs> it's a good show. Can you read it? You've got young eyes. Yeah, it's a good show. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what is her name? <laughs> her name? What your, what's your name? Bonnie Tate would be. She's a hyphener. Well, a hyphener. A hyphenator. A hyphenator. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. It's fun. I wish I could see it because usually Heather or Joe gets to see all the comments and I'm, I'm, I don't get to see them. I can see they're there. I just can't see what they said. Okay, so so you have this grand opening or is that what you call it or opening? Yeah, an opening night. Opening night? Okay. So you have that, it's usually like 5.30 to 7.30 yeah, on a Friday night. And evening, uh, Friday or Saturday night, night we Saturday. found are the best. Oh, okay. you know, when most people are ready to do something fun for the weekend. Yeah, it's kind of something you could do before or after your mm -hmm. dinner, dinner or Yeah, movie just or... swing in and um, stay or swing in and swing out. Yeah, that is cool. Mm -hmm. Now, you, as the gallery owner, you you eat the cost of the opening party? Right. Okay. Yeah, and that's pretty standard. Um, and, and we pay for the advertising. Um, we send out postcards. Uh, you know, print some nice postcards. Um, now, do you design the postcards, or do you co-design them with the with the artists? It depends. Usually, I do, unless they've got a certain idea that they want to go with. And you send those postcards to who? We send them to. Oh, well, we've got a mailing list, um, and then we also distribute them as wide, you know, as many places locally as we can. We give them to the photographer to hand out to their friends. Um, hand out to as many people as, as possible and then we do you know a ton of promoting online okay. uh, so through newsletter through Facebook through Instagram um, the local newspaper and then both of our um, TV stations have been great really supportive since we've opened about spreading the word that's what uh, you said the, yeah. new, the, the, the TV so, station people come out well were you Knock on wood, we've, we've been lucky to get, um, you know, a, a morning live shot, one of those awesome. crack of dawn uh, morning shots. Yeah, but a lot of people are watching Definitely. those. Definitely, <laughs> and if, if, you know, if we're able to do that on the night of the opening, it's usually a, a, a big, big boost. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, now that you're experienced with Facebook Live, you can start doing Facebook Live shows at your... <laughs> Bonnie watched me struggle with the technology of this today. <laughs> it like so much fun. <laughs> it wasn't too much fun. I like it better when Joe and Heather do it. I don't blame <laughs> <And> her. <that. laughs> okay, so, all right. So what else can we say? Now, tonight you're having a closing party. Party? Yeah, a closing reception party. Reception, um, okay. And we, this is the first time that we've done a closing, so we don't know how it'll go. Usually the opening nights are... are a, a nice crowd. Um, so if you're local, come to the light room tonight, 5.30 to 7.30. It's uh, the closing reception for Terry Longo's show. And it's downtown Panama City, Florida. Yeah. Um, all right, what else? I have another question. Oh, so do you, how do you, how do you promote that? Did you put the same type of promotion into the closing party as you did, or reception, I'm sorry, <laughs> as you did into the opening? Yeah, um, honestly, probably not quite as much, um, but we still are tr you know, trying to reach new people or trying to reach this, some of the same people, you know, some of the photographers, friends and family that might want to come back and just support her again. Okay. So it's just kind of an experiment, you know, to see if... Um, if, if we should do an opening and a closing or just stick with the opening night. Now, you you have a lot of experience with the Art Center and, and your own gallery and that kind of stuff. Do you find that, all right, this is something I find, I guess I want to see what you, if the people coming to you are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Photographers struggle with having a cohesive look to their portfolios. Mm -hmm. Like this, Teresa Longo, she's got the doors and windows, and so mm -hmm. she's got a theme going on. Yeah. Do you help them with their portfolios, or is that something that you offer in one of your classes, or, uh, well, or do they just kind of already have it going on, or you will accept them? Hopefully, um, when somebody comes with an idea for a show, um, it's either already visible or we can work and look through their their portfolio and 
you know, curate a show mm -hmm. so that we're taking the best of, of, you know, the work that they have and making it into a cohesive group with a theme or, a, you know, a visible style that, that really shows off the best that they can do. Now, do you, you don't do framing here, do you? No. No. Do you help them with it? Because that's something else that I see that photographers struggle with. They don't understand how important the framing the is. The presentation, yeah. Um, no, we don't do framing, but definitely kind of, you know, help and point in the right direction and try to guide the photographer if, they're, if they haven't presented their work um, either framed or on canvas or, you know, there's so many other printing methods now, yeah, printing sure on me right metal right. and um, uh, wood, and so there's a lot of other ways besides just the traditional framing, mm -hmm. which can often cost a lot less for the photographer. Yeah. So yeah. we always consider that too, you know, how are you going to present the photos, whether they're going to be in frames or all on canvas or a, mi a mixture, so that's definitely an important part of it because we want it to look, you know, we want the images to visually create a um, cohesive feeling and show off the style of the photographer, but then we also want the presentation to be professional right. and beautiful. Now, you, okay, so in this space you have the gallery. Mm -hmm and you teach classes and you rent the studio out. Right. And you actually take pictures too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what type of classes do you offer? Well, um, we offer a variety. So we always have beginning level classes going, you know, just um, frequently. And then we've got more specialty classes like, you know, niches like night photography, portrait portrait photography, and then we I teach some classes, other local photographers teach classes, and then other photographers come in and teach <laughs> special <laughs> workshops like Peggy's doing tomorrow. Yes, and we still have openings tomorrow here at the Lightroom in Panama City for a, it's a flash class, it's uh, Sunset Portraits, mm -hmm. so we have a model coming in, and we're going to talk about on-camera flash, off-camera flash, balancing your flash with your background, things like that. Mm -hmm. So. The, what is it? The Lightroom PC dot com. The Lightroom PC dot com. So mm -hmm. PC stands for Panama City. Panama City. City the yes. and it's the the is it the. the Lightroom PC dot com. Yes. We'll give you more information. <laughs> um, all right. So what else was I going to ask you? Is that right now the bulk of your income is the classes? It is. Yes. Um, how do you advertise them? Oh, in the same way. Um, you know, we do uh, lots of online reaching out through newsletter, Facebook, Instagram, um, some paid, you know, a little bit of paid advertisements, um, Google ads, Facebook ads, okay. just to let people who are searching find us naturally. Who are your customers for the classes? I mean, are they older, younger, it is professionals? A, it's a really a great mixture, and that's what's part of what's really fun about offering these classes is that they're um, people who are doing it for hobby, for a creative outlet, for um, you know people who are just getting into it, uh, and then photographers who have either done film photography in the past and now they're getting into digital and they're trying to figure out the difference. Um, so that's actually a big, a big portion. Is it really? Yeah, people ah. who are returning to photography. Um, and then the more specialized classes, like your, the one that you're going to teach, um, people who are, you know, starting to charge for their photography and, and start up a business, and they want to get better at their at specific skills. Okay, that's cool. And and what about renting the studio? Is that that's probably a smaller portion. It of is, your... yeah. Right now we've got just a, we call it a mini studio. It's a small space, um, kind of like a bare bones studio. Um, that you can bring your own, I and mean, we've got lighting in there, um, continuous lighting and strobe lighting. So you can come and use as is, or you can bring props, your own lighting, as much as you want. So people have really set up some cool things in the little studio. Oh. Um, and right now it's just $20 an hour. Oh Call ahead God. and reserve your time. So that was like killing me. Don't shouldn't have said that I know, on I should my have... Facebook is minus forty nine dollars an hour. Wow, we're you know totally different areas. 
Yeah, but my your space is pretty small. It is <laughs> tiny. Yeah, it's the mini studio. Um, but we've got this other great space in the back that she I showed, showed it you to earlier. Me. She, it's if you can see how big this space is, it's about the same size, right? Yeah, it's about a thousand square feet, so it's a good sized room. And what are your plans for that? And we want to create a big studio space that people can really do cool things in. So we'd have several um, ready-made kind of spaces set up for use against different backs, like one of the walls is a brick wall, one of them is a whitewashed wall, um, and people can do more extravagant photo shoots in there. And um, the other thing we want to do with that space is create a dark room, like I mentioned right. earlier. That's yeah. right. So those are kind of plan or phase two. And phase two. The, the mini studio we've got now does get a good amount of use. It was kind of an experiment to see if that's a you know, market, if people are looking for a studio space to use. Okay. Well, 20 bucks an hour. I know. I mean, should I, be filled all the time. <laughs> holy cow. I mean, why would you have your own studio, you know? I just, it's just, and now you're here though. It's only open when you're here, right? Yes. So they can't just, like for my studio, they go in, they can yeah. go in, whatever, I'm not there. Yeah, I mean, we've made special They have to have insurance things. is the thing with mine gotcha. because I'm not there. Yeah. But if, or if they don't have insurance, then I have to be there and I, they have to pay more, you know, yeah. because it's, you need insurance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just during the hours that we're open, um, or if we have got a class going at night, then that's extra time available. Okay. So is that disruptive, though, if somebody's back there when you got a class going on? It depends on what they're doing. Um, we've had, since it's a small space, people do, uh, you know, headshots, product photography. Oh, okay. So if it's something quiet like that, it's yeah. no problem. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. That's so funny. What else are they saying? Can, since, since now I know you can read it. <laughs> Bob Kelly is watching. Hey, Bob. And Heather. 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 Who? Hyphenated. Another hyphenated name. A hyphenator. Oh, Ponser. That's my beautiful niece. Oh. And she moved to Florida. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and Justina Rebecca is watching. Oh. Ah. I haven't seen you in a while, girl. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank I was you I couldn't tell because I saw they were green. I'm like, those four the other ones were white, the other comments. Yeah. That's I'm not familiar like, enough with I never live, so I don't know what it is. I've means. never seen it because everybody else takes care of me. Yeah. I'm so spoiled. I'm like the diva. I just come in and you know, so it's, this is my first and now time. You can do it on your own. <laughs> Although holding the mic is a little bit Yeah, more. that's an extra My job. arm's getting tired, <laughs> man. <laughs> All right, so what else can we talk about? Let's see. Um, what I want to ask you, because this is something that, you know, I teach a class called Selling Your Photography as Art, mm -hmm. and I'm actually going to work it into, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it into a, a full-blown online class, like several weeks long. Mm -hmm. One of the... I'm going to ask you, what do you think an artist would be the most important things for artists to do to start becoming professional artists? Like to sell their work or to put together a portfolio or whatever. What would be, I know I'm throwing you off because those weren't in my questions. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> but you have the experience. You've been around for a while. <laughs> um, I would say, you know, just Number one, work on making your photographs something that you're really proud of, okay. you know, and um, finding your unique style, you know, your eye. Um, I think that's probably number one, just like really being proud of what you're doing and having a body of work that you're happy to show people okay that you really think is something different because that's what stands out you know no matter if you're looking to sell your fine art photography or um your portrait you know if you're looking for portrait clients i think your work has to be something different than what it's we pretty, see all the time and it's so that hard really hard to do it's though so because hard. there are so many photographers it is yeah. so what can you do to be different and unique um, I think you can pursue the the type of photography that you you know are really truly most interested in doing, and it brings you the most joy. But 
for instance, I was a child, uh, mostly specializing yes. in children's photographer and I, uh, photography, and I thought I was pretty good at yeah. it. And, and uh, I couldn't, and I couldn't make a living at it anymore. So many others. There's yeah. just too many people doing it, and some of them are really good, but they charge so oh, little I money know. that they've driven the prices down. I understand. So that's kind of good advice, but it's not great advice. Let's see. What else? Well, I think that's the place to start. You on the spot. That's okay. <laughs> I think um, that's everybody's question: is how do you make your work stand out? And that's got to be the starting place: is to pinpoint exactly what type of photography you're, you know, really passionate about. Try it <laughs> and try to find your own, you know, style, your eye. Um, listen to the feedback that you get. What do other people think you're really great at? You know, it might be something different than what you think you're great at. That is really good advice because I think, it, to me, it seems like there are two camps. There are photographers who think they are so good, and you look at their work and you're like, you're okay, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then there are photographers who are really good who are like, oh, I'm terrible, I'm not that good. Definitely. And so having a somebody else that's, critically look at your work is a really, really yes. good advice. I think that's part of, uh, should be the part of the plan for everybody to get feedback as, as you know, hard as it is, as it is to have somebody, have lots of people look at your photography and criticize, you know, oh. constructive criticism. Um, it's so important because people, we see things so differently. So who, who should look at their work? I mean, on well, trained gotta, eye or should they go to a, you know, uh, professional photographer, other professional photographers? Should I, they go to professional artists? I should think, they, you know, you, of course you are naturally going to get a lot of feedback from your friends and your family and you have to take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, because sometimes your, your mom's going to tell you it looks great no matter what. Yes. <laughs> um, that's where you or she's start. Or if she's that kind of mom, she might go, this isn't good enough. <laughs> oh no, my mom's not like that. No, <laughs> mine neither. Um, but you know, you start there and then you have to kind of be a little bit more brave and approach other people that you don't know. If you take a class, that's great, you know, getting feedback from your your fellow, you know, your Peers, students, yeah. um, the instructor. If you find a mentor or a photographer that you admire, see if they will take a look or even, to, you know, let you come along with them to do a shoot. Um, the, the more trained the eye, I think, the better. So yeah. whether that's a teacher or somebody who's work you really like, you know, whose opinion you res respect. That's good. That is good advice. I actually did, uh, I think it might have been my first, the first podcast I was ever interviewed on, and, and this guy has become my friend. His name is Linford Morton, but he went and took a job with Canon. Actually, he's going to start a podcast with Canon now. Cool. But I, uh, he interviewed me about finding a photography mentor, and, and uh, Heather is going to find that episode somewhere and put it in the show notes in today's show notes because it was really good. Finding a mentor is not as hard as you would think. No, and a lot of photographers are really open to sitting down with you and taking a look at your work. Yeah, I mean it has to be a win-win situation, that's the thing. Yeah. You can't just go gimme, gimme, gimme. You right. have to give something back. Yeah, a lot of people, um, you know, if, if you are looking for experience as well, you know, offering to assist. For free. Uh, for free. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, you've got to put in work, a lot of a lot of work for free before, you know, you should feel comfortable charging for your work, whether, no matter what type of photography you're doing. The other, the other um, advice I always tell people is to join the local, their local art association because... Yes. Then you're around other artists who are selling their work. You're going to learn. I learned my very first art fair mm -hmm. uh, across the parking lot from me is a, a, an oil painter mm -hmm. named Tom Millsap. And I went over to him and I said, hey, I'm going to have a booth or uh, it, yeah, booth in this art show. What should I do? Yeah. And he just rambled off a whole bunch of advice to me yeah. that was really, really good advice because that's mm -hmm. what he does for a living. Mm -hmm. He's a full-time artist. So... He's got nothing to do with photography, but he was really, really helpful. 
So, um, and he did tell me about putting together a look. You know, you need to have a look, which of course at that time I was like, a look? Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm a very typical photographer where I, oh, this, I'm going to use my fisheye today and say, yeah. oh, there's my infrared camera. Oh, lens baby, that looks fun. Yeah. Oh, I love well, bird photography. No, I like landscape photography. Today I'm into babies. <laughs> Another thing that I, I found helpful and uh, I always suggest when we have classes is that people look at, you know, master photographers, look at the history of photography and find the best from the last 100 years, you know, the best portrait photographers, the best, uh, you know, whatever your niche is. Okay. And, and look to see how you can see their style. And that, and then it becomes obvious that people do have styles, but it takes a long time to develop it, I think. And um, or to find it, some people find it right away. I have a there was a lady who took classes with us that she is really becoming successful as an artist, and mm -hmm. it was one of her first few pictures that she took. The reflection, she was in New York City and she took the reflect. and everybody who watches this show has heard me talk, and actually Karen Shulman was on this show, her name is Karen Shulman, and she took a picture of, or several pictures of um, the reflections, okay, so the window display in Bergdorf Goodman, mm -hmm with the reflections, mm -hmm. and you could see both. Mm -hmm. You could see the inside the window yeah. and the reflections, since she waited for cool reflections of the taxi driving by or yeah. whatever. And I think she calls it window dressing, it's her series. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's had incredible success right away, yeah. right away on awesome. that. And she just kind of fell into it, because mm -hmm. it was fun and she liked it. And yeah. people would go ooh and ah when mm -hmm. they'd see it. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you know, I mean, you look at people, look at Clyde Butcher, who is a famous photographer mm -hmm. in this area. Mm -hmm. He has a certain look. He does black and white. He yeah. does vast landscapes. Mm -hmm. He, I think he teaches some classes, too, and he was a guest on the show as well, Clyde Butcher. But he talks about, you know, having something to lead you into the picture and not stop. I mean, he had a lot of good cute mm -hmm. composition. Yeah, mm -hmm. compositional type of tips, I guess, mm -hmm. to help you find that look. Yeah, and working on a series of photos is another suggestion. Like this lady yeah. with the doors so, and windows. Right, having an idea of this type of photograph that I'm going to take. And you, you know, sometimes you'll find that type of photograph and sometimes you'll have to hunt for it, but just having an intention to create a series of photographs I think is a nice step if you're having trouble kind of finding what you know, your style is or your eye, think, well, what topic do I want to hone in on and set out to create a series of maybe 10 or 12 photos. So what are some ideas for series? Like she has doors and windows. Yeah, well, what else it's you so got? broad. What you got? <laughs> well, I heard some good advice uh, somewhere about photography, uh, and that was, you know, if you're hunting for a theme or a project, mm -hmm. Um, think about what only you can photograph. So what people or place or culture or situation do only you have access to that other people don't. So that might be, it might be um, that you are a photographer who, who knows lots of artists. So maybe you do a portrait series on artists mm -hmm. or you might have another part-time job as a baker, and you photograph within the bakery. Okay. Or, so those are probably not great examples, no, but, but that, no, think about your own life and, and what places and people, um, and sometimes they might be obscure things. Like I can think of a photographer who did a series on swing dancing because she oh. was a swing dancer. Oh, that's cool. And so she did a whole series of dancers and kind of the swing dance community and they were wonderful. And it's not something that most people had seen. Oh my gosh. All right, you are gonna to have to talk to the camera for a minute because look, I have a, I, we have a slight problem going on. I have this iPhone plugged in, but it says low battery mode, so now, all right, so okay. I'm gonna ask you a question. Okay. So how about marketing? What can an artist do to market their work? And you okay. gotta work on that while I figure out what okay. the heck is going on with the, the thing. <laughs> Um, a photographer can 
start with their uh, friends and family and the people that know what they're up to um, and spread the word w amongst the people that they know first. Okay. And how do they spread the word? Well, make sure that the people that are most, you know, important to you know what you're working on, you know, know what you're trying to do, that you're trying to get your name out there, that you're trying to work on this photography series on the bakery or, you know, whatever it is. And so, so what? So your 10 people so, know. Right. So then the 10 people <laughs> spread the word to their 10 people How and they, their 10 people and, why and their would 10 they? people. Because they do. I mean, I'm if so your scared, friend <laughs> has a need for a photographer, they think of you. You know, if you're a but friend you know, of a friend, I, I, and it's not going to work in every case. Yeah, but because you, I can't even get, like, I can't even get people to share stuff on Facebook. Yeah. I mean, we're overloaded with. And people, you know, they're like. Stuff to share. It's like, you're my mother, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, my mother, she doesn't even go on Facebook, so. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's, yeah. So what else? Let's well, move on from the friends and family. Okay, so start some with of us the friends. Don't have, some of us don't have good enough friends and family. No, I'm just kidding, because I have some wonderful friends and wonderful family. Heather. <laughs> start with them. Um, spread the word through, you know, all of your local contacts that are beyond friends and family. So, you know, any local media contacts that you have. Any, what if you don't have any? any? How do you well, do you, like, have to, you, you have to make... You know, you have to introduce yourself. You have to send an email if you have a magazine or a, a blog or, you know, some something that you would like to be recognized by. Send an email. So, um, so say there's a local magazine. All right, hold on. Back on it. I just, I didn't have the uh, power strip turned on, but I turned it on and it still says low battery mode. So if you guys lose us, I don't know why the, the thing is not charging. Um, so, okay, so say there's a local magazine that I would like to be featured in, and so I, what do I do? Look in the magazine to see who to contact? And yeah, then... I mean, you, you know, you want to go through the proper channels, and um, usually there's some kind of option for submissions. You know, if you have a story idea, um, if you know a writer that works for a local newspaper or magazine, that's the person to start with. Um, and if you don't have any personal contact, then, you know, you use whatever outlet that they give you. And um, what if they don't even, what if they just ignore you? Well, that's going to happen a lot. Yeah. So you just keep trying. You know, you keep on sending. You keep sending those emails. You keep submitting things. And you just never know. So what, what kind of things? So do you think it's a good idea to write a story? Um, because like a press I'm a release photographer. Or? No, I mean like... Like, I'm a photographer, and, you know, here's my art. Mm -hmm. Should I say, I'm a photographer, I went to Cuba, and here's a story about Cuba with my art? Well, yeah, it depends on where you're trying to get your art shown. You know, if it's a gallery. No, no, I'm talking about publications. A magazine, magazines, okay. Or TV show, or TV news, or whatever. Yeah, um, I know that the local stations here, like the, the reporters that come and cover our openings for our shows, um, they are always looking for stories. Okay. They are always looking for stories. They okay. have to go every morning somewhere to do a live... Every single morning? Every morning. I don't think the weekend. Wow. You know, they have to go every morning to show the community something interesting that's happening. Okay. Um, so... And, I mean, that would mean that you'd have to have your photos on the wall or be doing something. That you'd have you to can have an opening or something. Right. Um, but I'm sure it's the same for people who are writing those, you know, um, art, like the local art blogs or the newspapers, um, you know, art or culture section. Mm -hmm. You know, just send an email and they're, what i found is that they're more open than you think to, to receiving stories. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, for me, I, I um, you know, I have a freelance job with Florida Weekly, who mm -hmm. hasn't made it up here yet, but they probably will, because they are doing so well. It's such a great newspaper. Mm -hmm. But uh, writing, actually writing an article is how I ended up getting in there. And your and, article was about uh, your photography or your business? Or? It was, the first article I wrote was when I went to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Hi, Vicki. I have a good friend who lives in the Philippines. <laughs> 
I doubt if she's watching this live though, because it's like four Probably o'clock not. in the morning. <laughs> um, but I did, you know, I sent pictures and did a story about traveling in the Philippines, mm-hmm. and then I think I did one for Cuba. I forget. And yeah. I, actually, one of my, um, you know, somebody who was taking some private lessons with me, he started writing a travel articles in one of the local magazines. Mm-hmm. So that is an idea if you're a travel photographer. I think if you have a ready story. It's a lot story. of work though. Yeah. If you have Writing is hard. Definitely. I was lucky because the editor at Florida Weekly, um, she cleaned it up for mm-hmm. me because she was amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I would say, here's what I did, one, two, three, and she would go and she would make it like all flowery and fun to read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people really have a, well, Heather, the one who works at, at uh, Understand Photography, she's really good at writing, too. Yeah. That's why she does the show notes. <laughs> That's why I stick to photography, yeah. because writing is yeah. too hard. So what yeah. else? Because we, we still have like seven minutes. So let's talk about ways artists can market their art. Mm-hmm. Now, for me, we talked about this earlier mm-hmm. today. I think having a newsletter is the most important thing in the world. Definitely. And you have a newsletter. We, yeah. Tell I, me about your newsletter. newsletter. And I've had a newsletter just when I was doing photography just on my own. I had a newsletter. So probably since 2010, I think. Or before I've had a newsletter going that I've religiously. <laughs> so sent if out. you're just if you're like an art art photographer, mm-hmm. what would you put in a newsletter? Because that's the biggest struggle for them. Yeah, coming up with new stuff that people really. For me, I read. never. I have mine are too long. I have, have too much. so much to say. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> well, I, but I've been doing it. What happens is I've been I've had a newsletter since 2001. Yeah. And it just gets easier and easier and easier mm-hmm. to do. Mm-hmm. You get more ideas, not less. Yeah. You don't run out of ideas. Right. Your brain kicks in and you've got a thousand ideas. Yeah. So I think you want to share whatever is happening with your photography. Like, what if what? you feel like nothing's happening? Though? Yeah, I don't mean, sometimes you really like have to Like, you have no dig. openings. You have. Sometimes you really have to dig for it. But I think sharing the project that you're working on or the last shoot that went really well. Um, sharing just images, you know, recent favorite images, just oh, to that's keep a good one. contact. Yeah, that's a really um, good one. If you've done any kind of learning, uh, if you've branched out into any kind of new, you know, experiment, experimental area, if you've taken on any new interesting client or, um, you know, just anything that is important. Yeah, and your newsletter doesn't have to be step. long. It can no, be really it can short. be super short, and we all know how much stuff fills up our inbox, and nobody really wants it, you know, or or will read all of what you send them most of the time. So usually, short and snappy's best, I think. Yeah, yeah, mine are too long. I know. <laughs> I just have too much to say, and then I want to put, I want to always want to put photo tips in there. I want to have three photo, t- mm-hmm. three like articles or videos or something in mm-hmm. each one. Yeah. But I have to package those in between all my little ads because <laughs> I want them to sign up for my trip or my class or whatever. Well, I'm thinking I'm a local, uh, not a photographer, but a local artist uh, here in Panama City that does a really nice newsletter, Heather Clements. And she often puts in a lot of personal uh, you know, images of her in her studio, of her working oh. on her current painting. People so love behind the, the scenes. Si- yes, behind the scenes. People love that. Because That's even though you advice. think what you're doing may be just boring, blah, <laughs> you know, if you're not a photographer or not a, an artist, you don't know what happens behind the scenes. So even so what you think is ordinary is like a little insight to somebody else. So if you have nothing else that's really happening, you can at least show what you're working on. That's fabulous advice. And you know what? You can just set up your iPhone and on a tripod. You yeah. have to get a little adapter thing mm-hmm. to put, like, I don't know what you call that little thing that we've got the iPhone on, but they're like $10. Yeah. Just buy one of those, stick your iPhone on a tripod, and just record yourself doing something. You don't even have to have sound. Right. Right? Yeah. Just you in your studio. You, you know, out side in the swamp doing your photo your dead yeah. lakes photo oh i'm going to dead lakes <laughs> i'm very excited so captain matt with off what is his name of off, his the map. off the map off the map expeditions is going to mm-hmm. take us out uh, tomorrow but you're not going mm-hmm. oh well dead lakes it's in the panhandle and it's fabulous just wait i'll i'll post pictures <laughs> yeah. so what do you have next coming up you have your goodbye 
I could, what, Our we're closing, we're reception. closing reception tonight for Teresa Longo. Yeah, and then um, you mean exhibit wise and just in general. Yeah. Well, Everything. we've got your workshop tomorrow. Um, our next exhibit, um, we're, we have a little bit of a window off, um, and then our next exhibit opens the first week of September, and it's going to be Cuba. Oh, that's um, right. So another solo show, just one photographer doing um, her collection of Cuba photos. Okay, that's so cool. Uh, and then the exhibit after that is another travel uh, show. Actually, it's two photographers, or, sorry, three. Um, and their work is all travel based. Okay. From different, they both, they all have their specific area of the world that they've concentrated in. So is it going to be like one, one area of the world, another area of the world, depending Hopefully on? Hopefully we'll hang it by photographer. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Now, um, what, what's your busy time for the classes? Is it busier in the summer or is it busier in the well, winter? Well, you know, we're kind of still learning that because we've only been open a little over a year and a half. Oh, that's true. So, um, Let's see, certain types of classes, the ones that are more outdoor oriented, like we do a night photography class that's that's been pretty popular, um, those are better in the fall and when it's not hot and buggy. So we've tried to fit the class to uh, the season as best we can so okay. far. Classes where we spend more time indoors, those are great for winter. If we don't need a lot of sunlight, you know, to go out and shoot in, those are great for winter. The editing classes that we do, Photoshop and Lightroom, um, those seem to be pretty pretty good all year round. But um, now, do you have a lot of snowbirds here, or is this because your season is pretty much the season well, as people get, up north? Isn't we get it? a lot of snowbirds in January, February, and March. She's so, kicking the thing. <laughs> uh, January, February, and March. Okay, so you do get snowbirds. We do get snowbirds, yeah. It's cold here in January, February, it's March. It's not as though, cold as Canada, though. It usually feels uh, pretty good to them, I think. You got snow last year, didn't you? Or that, oh, no. was that the year before? Just a, you know, a sprinkle if we get any snow. But that's snow. It's snow, but it's not anything to... Holy cow. Don't if I was going to be a snowbird, I'd be coming to Naples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, January doesn't feel good to me here, but um, apparently, if you know, if you're used to a lot worse, it feels it, it great. It feels good. That's yeah. so funny to me. So now, where can our audience find you and your gallery? Your 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 uh, website is thelightroompc.com. Okay. And PC is for Panama City. And you're located here and on what street? We're in downtown Panama City on Harrison Avenue, if you are ever in downtown Panama City. And we're right by come in and the Art high. Center, and it's going to show Mel Brooks stuff, which sounds fun. Yeah, we've got a nice spot <laughs> so here. So is that what they show, classic movies? They do class I mean, they do theater and then also classic movies. Oh, they do movies. live theater, too? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. how fun. Yeah, we're in a nice little corner here. This is such a cute little downtown. Yeah, I'm very we've got a great coffee shop two doors down. Got to so, have a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. It's part of the part of our culture yeah. at this point, and right? And we didn't until they so, opened. Actually, well, we had it. We did do have one other spot downtown. I think. And you back. have a a co-op uh, antique store that I remember from last time because I drove by and I went, ooh, that's where I got my big ship. There are <laughs> a couple of really great antique stores downtown, oh and there are a couple gosh. of other art galleries downtown too. Three. Really? So, um, anybody awesome. who's not been to Panama City and is nearby, please come it's and check time. us out next time. It's time to come. Yeah. yeah. And your classes are all listed on your website, right? Yeah, we've got our upcoming exhibits, our upcoming classes. Um, we also do kids classes. That was something I oh. meant to mention earlier. How did that uh, most go? of what we do is, you know, is with adults, but we've done summer camp kids photography camps. And how long are they? Like nine to twelve, or do you have? All um, day, we or? do an afternoon, so one to five, one to one to four thirty, one and to how five. How old are the kids? Um, different ages. We've done a teen class, and then we've done a younger middle school age class. And what do you teach them when they're that young? We do digital photography. Um, we do a little bit of editing, and that works better with you know the, the teens. Okay. Um, we do a little bit of studio photography. Um, we go outside and do a lot of just walking around, photo scavenger hunt type oh, things. That's fun. So we look for you know comp different composition elements. Um, 
And then we actually did a little bit of analog photography. We've done some 35 millimeter film wow. classes um, and then some cyanotype sun prints. Oh my gosh. So we kind of try to work in a little bit of pre-digital photography just to give them something to compare. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, because most kids have never seen anything but an iPhone for photography. Exactly. You know? <laughs> and then a lot, you know, if you didn't, if some of the kids didn't have a camera and they just had their phone, that worked too. Okay. Uh, whatever they had, they brought. And then at the end, we printed out photos. So oh, the so idea was that everybody had a little portfolio to take home. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, that was fun. So you did that already this summer. You're not doing it again this summer. Right. Yeah, school's about to start back. So we did one in June and one in July. And we'll do another one um, during the spring break here. And then another couple next summer. How fun. Yeah. Awesome. The LightroomPC.com, Bonnie, Tate, would be. <laughs> so remember to check out our show notes on understandphotography.com. Heather does a great job of typing up the most important things and she puts in the links and everything like that. We'll also put this on our YouTube channel, Understand Photography, and it's going to be a podcast, the Understand Photography Show. It's uh, on everything, on iTunes and Stitcher and whatever you listen to your podcasts on. Uh, our website has many, many different articles if you, if you like short how-to articles. Remember our motto at Understand Photography is we simplify the technical. So hopefully you will like our teaching style. To remember, next week is our 100th episode with Artie Morris. It's, it's going to be a live question and answer. Uh, format with our new set and lots of door prize door prizes are they door prizes not door prizes because they don't come in the door but kind of so if you make comments you're going to be el eligible to win i'm peggy farron thank you so much for watching episode 99 of the understand photography show we'll see you next friday at 4 p.m eastern daylight time and thanks bonnie thank you for being here peggy Thank you for watching the Understand Photography show. It would help us immensely if you would click like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get up.